Hi guys, it's Alyssa. I am here with another reading for you today. I hope you've all been doing well. So today's reading is going to be a pretty fun one, I think. We are going to be asking who are you going to marry or who is your future long-term partner going to be? Personality traits, what they look like, what your relationship is going to be like, whatever the cards want to tell us about that person and about that uh, relationship, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So, I have four piles of cards here. We have pile one, two, three, and four. And on top of each pile, I have um, some Polaroid pictures that I've taken over the last couple of years to help you guys choose. So, um, this is the picture for pile number one, if it'll focus, I hope. Come on. Pile one. This is pile number two. Pile three's picture. Sorry, you can see the reflection of the camera. Um, and lastly, pile four. Come on. There we go. So I'll give you guys a moment to make your choices. The timestamps will be um, in the comment section as usual. So if you already know which pile you want to choose, you can head on down there and skip ahead. Um, if not, feel free to pause the video, meditate on the question, feel it out, take your time. And um, also as usual, all of my links are going to be in the description box if you're interested in purchasing a private reading with me. The details uh, are on my website and my Etsy store. You can order through either of those um, avenues. And um, you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram at Serpentine Daughter. The links will be below if you want to check that stuff out. So, um, we're going to get right into this with pile number one. Okay, so those of you who chose option one, let's find out who you're going to marry. Okay, so the first card that we have here is the choice card. We have surrender. At times we must surrender the old before something new can come into our lives. Let go and all will work out. We have to the sea, it is in the reverse position. We have the chemistry card, there's a strong magnetic attraction here. We have expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. New moon in Capricorn, your hard work is paying off. The romance card and your tarot cards are, okay. We have the Nine of Wands, we have the King of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, the Magician, the Star, and the Seven of Swords. Okay, group one, give me a second to look over these cards. Um, hmm, okay. So, group number one. Um, the first thing that I'm getting from these cards is it's it's interesting because I'm I'm getting your journey with this person, um, or or your relationship, I guess I should say, with this person is going to be kind of a journey. Like this marriage, this union, it's going to be a bit of a journey getting to that point, if that makes sense. Um, I say that because we have the Nine of Wands here. This card is uh, really about like struggling to overcome some sort of obstacles, per, uh, achieve a particular goal. Um, this card has a very weary kind of energy to it. A lot of times it indicates, you know, just feeling tired, feeling kind of beaten up, maybe feeling like giving up on something that you've been working towards because it's just way more effort than you anticipated maybe, or it's just taking way longer than you anticipated to get to where you want to be. Um, just a very, uh, you know, tired, um, 
kind of vibe with this card and it's just it, it's just an energy of like fighting and, and struggling um not like conflict really it's fighting in the sense of like fighting for what you want fighting to um maintain something that you maybe you have um so that's kind of interesting we also have uh two cards here that relate to release and surrender receptivity the surrender card obviously and also to the sea in the reverse position this is really um a lot of times it, it, it is a message of surrender like in the upright this is really about going with the flow you know just taking things as they come uh going where you feel led to go doing what you feel led to do in the reverse though sometimes it can indicate um like resistance uh against just the flow of of what's going on around you um it can sometimes indicate that maybe you are trying to exert too much control over your circumstances over your present situation but um like i said in general this card is really just about release surrendering control and having faith that you know things will turn out the way that they are supposed to in everyone's best interest um so that's kind of interesting we also have this card new moon in capricorn it says your hard work is paying off so um this is a very industrious kind of energy it's kind of giving me a similar vibe actually to the nine of wands and um it's it's really emphasizing to me like this relationship is going to be work um and you know every i mean don't let that put you off because literally every relationship that we have requires some work and um you know marriages and you know long-term relationships require a lot of work a lot of effort um it takes you know commitment it takes dedication to make things last over time so i think that's really what this card is talking about and it's it's kind of interesting because i'm a lot of the stuff that i'm seeing here it's really talking to me more about the nature of your relationship to this person and like the journey to your marriage or the journey to your union um as opposed to like details about the actual person um so if uh I may have to pull some more cards once we get through uh, all of these. Also, we have the choice card here. This is pretty straightforward. This is about choice decisions. Um, kind of going along with what I was saying with this card about this uh, relationship requiring a lot of effort and dedication. Choice. This kind of talks to me about like, how do I want to say this? Um, I feel as though this relationship to your future spouse, it is something that you're going to have to choose like every day, maybe not every day, but you know what I mean? It's, it's like, you're going to, I'm seeing you guys. Oh my gosh. I, I'm trying to figure out how I want to explain what I'm, what I'm getting here. Um, It's like I'm seeing you guys making the choice over and over again to invest in this connection, to make the effort in this relationship, to commit yourselves to this relationship. And it's like that might sound kind of exhausting um, on the surface, but it's like you and this person choosing one another over and over again does that make sense and i feel like that's really that's really what love and devotion is it's it's consciously making the choice to make something work it's making the choice to always be there for one another to support one another so with that said, I actually see a lot of stability within this relationship. Um, we do have this Capricorn energy. This is Earth energy. We also have the King of Pentacles and the Page of Pentacles. Pentacles also relate to 
earth energy. This is um, very, I, I feel it, that this relationship is going to be very, very grounded and very secure. Like, even though things are not always going to be easy, this relationship at the end of the day, I think, is going to be a refuge for you. Um, the Page of Pentacles, this card talks to me about, like, physical attraction. The Page of Pentacles relates to, you know, curiosity, interest, intrigue. Um, I feel initially this is going to be a very, um, I don't want to say this is going to be based on sex a lot, but it feels like in the early stages of this connection, it's, it, it's going to be primarily fueled by mutual attraction. And this chemistry card is kind of going along with that. It says there's a strong magnetic, magnetic attraction here. So I feel like the, um, the physical chemistry, that's going to really be the main pull, um, at the start of this relationship. And, uh, the romance card is giving me kind of a similar vibe. So, um, that's going to be kind of the foundation, but over time, I see this evolving. I see this deepening immensely, F going from this, you know, page energy, this very new, exciting, you know, kind of uh, youthful energy to this king energy, which is much more mature. It's much more stable. Um, it's, 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 it's responsibility and commitment. You know what I'm saying? So, um, as I've really already touched on, um, I, I just see a, such an intense level of devotion in this relationship. And um, I am going to go ahead and pull a few more cards and see if there's any more like details that, that, that want to come out about this actual person. Um, we have the moon card showing up here. We have, let's see, the page of cups. Ten of Cups and Three of Cups. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, Three of Cups. This is very strong emotional bonds between people. This card um, a lot of times relates to friendships, but in general, it's just, you know, deep connections, emotional connections. Um, it also relates to celebration, good times, togetherness. Um, Ten of Cups, kind of similar, but it's like magnified. This is um, this is like loving relationships, happy families, uh, that kind of energy. And I do relate this card a lot to marriage. It's not explicitly a marriage card, but just the energy of the card. It's like, it, it's like people coming together and it, it's got a very familial kind of vibe to me. Um, okay. So I'm sorry if you could hear that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we also have the Magician here um, and the Star. So these two cards are kind of going hand in hand for me. The Magician is about manifestation, potential, opportunity. It's about making dreams into reality. The Star, this also speaks to me of manifestation, creativity. It also talks about hope for the future. It's a very optimistic kind of energy. And it also relates to fate and destiny and, and those types of concepts, divine guidance. So um, I feel like when you meet this person, like I said, initially, I think it's going to be kind of driven by the physical attraction and, and that the chemistry. But I feel like as time goes on, this is going to be this. Okay. So this is kind of interesting because I feel like I'm seeing, I'm seeing this relationship, like I'm seeing this person becoming like a goal for you, if that makes sense. Like, you, you, you deciding that this is the person you want, and so you're going to do whatever you need to do to make this relationship work. And so, um... With, you know, the choice card and surrender and to the sea being here and the nine of wands, I kind of feel like 
Okay, I'm, I'm getting kind of a progression of events here I'm, that I'm seeing. So let me try to describe <laughs> this progression of events. I see you and this person meeting. I see, like I said, this being initially very driven by chemistry and attraction, but I think very quickly as you as you begin to get to know each other, it's going to deepen pretty rapidly. And I see you at that point making the choice, you know, this this is the person that I want to be with. Like this is my person. I found my person. This is it. However, I feel like it may take some time for this to actually progress into something serious, like real. Um, and I say that because the Page of Cups here, uh, a lot of times this indicates to me like a crush, puppy love, a, a very, very new relationship. Um, and also the Moon card here. The moon relates to the subconscious. It can indicate illusions. It can represent um, secrets, revelations. The seven of swords is kind of similar as well because this card is... Um, this card is pretty commonly associated with, like, deception, betrayal. However, more broadly, it is also associated with like secrets coming out truths being revealed illumination similar to the moon card so with that said i kind of get the impression that there may be some obstacles to the two of you actually getting together like actually coming into a committed relationship with each other um and i think you know in addition to like this card being about, you know, the two of you continuously putting the work and, and effort into your relationship. I feel like this is also going to be about, like, there being a lot of work, there being, there, you know, you, you having to have a lot of commitment just to get to the relationship itself. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like there's going to be times where it may look like things things may be looking kind of bleak for the two of you. And I don't, I want to emphasize that I really don't see like conflicts happening between you and this person. I feel like a lot of the obstacles, a lot of the setbacks are going to be external factors, like outside pressures on this connection. Um, it, it, this could be potentially like a long distance thing, um, or they're just, there, there could be, um, just something blocking the two of you from coming together. For some of you, I feel like it may be another person or people, um, like an ex or an attachment to someone else. Okay, that's interesting. This is not going to be applicable for all of you, but for some of you, I'm getting that even though you're going to be very interested in this person and you're going to want to invest in this connection, it, it may be a bit difficult initially because you may be struggling with an attachment to someone else that you're trying to let go of. And that's also where this energy of surrender and release is coming in as well. Um, and choice, again, it's, it's like I see you choosing this person over the person that you may have the attachment to, that you may realize you need to let go of. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, because, like, I do feel that this person is going to give you their time. This person's going to give you their attention. This is not going to be a relationship that you're going to have to, um, where you're going to have to fight just to get some acknowledgement from this person. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be balanced. It's going to be reciprocal. You know, you're not going to be just getting crumbs. You're going to be getting like the full meal from this person. And I think for those of you who maybe um, have an attachment to someone else, 
that's going to be what leads you to making this decision to, you know, release that that other connection and embrace this one. Does that make sense? Because this connection is going to be kind of life-changing. Like this person is going to give you what no one else has. And I feel, I definitely feel that if um, children is some, if, if you're interested in having children, if you would like a family eventually, this card is definitely telling me that that is, that is a possibility for the two of you. Um, I'm seeing some of you adopting actually, like specifically, or like fostering children together. Not that you won't, like, have your own children necessarily, but that's just something um, that I wanted to mention because, I don't know, um, that's kind of a, making the decision, I mean, to adopt obviously is a big, it's a big thing, but being like a foster parent, that's, that's kind of a huge deal, and something that a lot of people are kind of, I don't know, some people are kind of weird about that. So, um, this is, and this is kind of bringing us into, like, this person's actual traits, what they're like. Um, I feel, I get a lot of very loving, very compassionate energy from this person, okay? Um, this is a very romantic individual. This is, yeah, the the Knight of Cups is showing up here. And, and going along with the page, you know, these energies are kind of similar. The Knight of Cups to me is a very romantic person. The Knight of Cups is someone who, you know, enjoys some of the more cliche, like, romantic things, like long walks on the beach, candlelit dinners, that kind of thing. Not, not, necessarily like those things specifically, but um, this is going to be someone who's going to enjoy like going on dates, you know, just spending time, the two of you, you know, doing nice things together. Um, we also have the Queen of Swords here and the Nine of Swords. So swords in general, these are very, this, this is a very intellectual uh, kind of energy. Swords relate to our thoughts, mental activity. Um, the Nine of Swords usually indicates anxiety, stress. Um, this person may have a little bit of an inclination towards overthinking things. And the Queen of Swords is kind of going along with that because, you know, the Queen of Swords is a very, like, logical, rational person, typically. Um, she's definitely a thinker. She is someone who analyzes, reflects. Um, so, what I'm getting from these two cards is that this person, <laughs> I feel like this person makes efforts to be logical and rational at all times. However, they, like I mentioned, they may have a um, tendency to kind of overthink things or get stuck in their head about things. Um, I do get a lot of air energy and also a lot of earth energy from this person. So they could be an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Obviously, I'm getting Capricorn a lot here with the um, new moon and Capricorn card. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? As, as I already mentioned, I feel like some of you may struggle with an attachment, other attachments, um, or be in the process of you know, trying to detach from someone else when you meet this person. Um, and so that could create a little bit of friction, perhaps. It could be an obstacle that the two of you will have to overcome. And I, I feel like for some of you, your person may recognize that you have an attachment to someone else. And it may, like I said, it may present a little bit of an issue. This person might kind of question, at least initially, <sighs> how serious you are about them, um, if they should really, if this is something that they should, um, what's the word I'm looking for? 
if you're someone that they really should pursue or if they should just back off and, and let you do your thing. Um, however, I feel, I, I just, I feel the two of you being just, just feeling so, um, like pulled to one another. It's like a magnetic kind of feeling that I get. And so I think as the two of you get to know each other better and become closer, I get the sense that you are going to realize, or you, you may make some new insights um, as a result of this connection. Particularly, I get the sense that some of you, some of you are going to end up letting go of all your expectations about like your relationships. Because I feel like some of you may, when you meet this person, some of you may have another connection in mind, like another person in mind that you want to be with or you think you want to be with. And so like that, that idea keeps coming up here for me. So I feel like a lot of you who are watching this now, you may already have like this attachment to this person, this other person, not your future spouse that we're talking about um, with these cards specifically. But some of you may already have an attachment to someone. This person, I do not think is the same person that you may or may not have an attachment to now. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing you letting go. I'm seeing you making a sacrifice. Sacrificing expectations. Sacrificing desired outcomes for this relationship. Because I just, I, I see you changing your mind. I see you saying to yourself, you know what? I'm shifting gears here. I'm stepping onto a new path. And I'm going to go down this new path with this person. Because they are giving me the time, the energy, the love that I have not been receiving. Do you understand? Okay, we have the Page of Wands. We have the Five of Cups and the Lover's card showing up here. Okay. Page of Wands, this is creativity, excitement, enthusiasm. The Five of Cups, this is typically grief, loss. Um, it can represent being very fixated on uh, negativity or just having a very pessimistic kind of mindset. And the Lover's card, this is union, this is partnerships, this is unconditional love. And this card also relates to choice. So I see you guys choosing love. I see you guys choosing love and choosing, like, re-choosing it every day with, with each other. Um, anyway, Page of Wands, I get the sense that there's, there's kind of a duality to this person. There's a part of them that maybe has a tendency to be kind of melancholy and anxious, as, as we touched on with the Nine of Swords. And this Five of Cups is kind of illustrating that as well. But then there's another side of them that is very passionate, that is very enthusiastic and, and kind of youthful. So, <laughs> and, and the lovers is sort of illustrating that duality as well, because, you know, this is Gemini, this is the twins. So it's like, there's these two, two, very different aspects of this person. And that doesn't mean that they are like two-faced or that they have um, two like totally different personalities. But, you know, everybody has some level of duality. Uh, we're very, human beings are complicated, complex, extremely complex creatures. Also, I am getting as far as appearance, I don't like to focus too much on physical appearances because it's changeable. You know, people can dye their hair, they can lose weight, gain weight, whatever. Um, but I will just mention some of the stuff that I'm seeing. Um, 
I'm seeing someone who is kind of well built, a little bit on the tall side for their gender. Um, not really thin, but not really overweight either. Just like I said, built, kind of kind of muscular, very fit, I would say. Um, a little on the thick side. <laughs> And I'm getting, like, skin on the darker end of the spectrum. Like, regardless of their race, their skin tone is just kind of on the darker side, if that makes sense. Um, let me grab a couple more cards here. I feel like this person probably, most for, for most of you, I feel like this person does want to have a family eventually. And I also feel like this person really likes animals. Um, so they may have a number of pets and, and not just, <laughs> I want to say not just like regular pets, like cats and dogs and stuff. I feel like for some of you, this person may have, you know, like, um, lizards or like a snake or birds or flying squirrels so, like just kind of pets that are kind of on the less common side you know what i mean we have the two of wands here and let me get one more oops we have the queen of cups so queen of cups two of wands quite a family-oriented person, I feel, loving. Queen of Cups is a very, very loving maternal kind of energy. And it's interesting because we have the Queen of Cups showing up here. We've also had the Queen of Swords. Um, we do have the King of Pentacles here also. Um, but the fact that we have these two queens, I get the sense that um, this person is... This person may have some very, like, I, I, I want to say maternal, but this isn't, honestly, I feel like for a lot of you, this is like a man or a, a, a masculine aligned person, but they have this very maternal kind of feminine energy as well. And I feel like that's kind of tying into that duality that I was talking about a few minutes ago. And I mean, this is this is all just energy really, so like don't get caught up on the gender stuff. But um I just wanted to point out the the fact that we have these two queens here and and I just get a very uh I guess I'll say parental um, parental kind of, like, instinct from this person. Like, like, they just, they like to take care of people. Like, yeah, okay, that's a good way of putting it. I feel like this person is kind of a natural caregiver, okay? Just very loving and very kind and gentle and compassionate. Um, this person also has pretty big goals, but I feel like sometimes they maybe get ahead of themselves. Um, and the Page of Wands is kind of tying into this as well. The Two of Wands is potential. Um, to me, this card is like looking out into the unknown, thinking about the possibilities. You know, what what are you capable of? What what is out there that you could achieve? Um, and the Page of Wands can represent like creative projects, new ideas, inspiration, that kind of thing. So I feel like this person has some pretty big goals, particularly um, like creative goals. Uh, like, for some of you, maybe this person wants to write a book someday, or they want to, like, learn how to, I don't know, paint, like, Bob Ross. <laughs> uh, I, I just feel like this is, this is, um, this is kind of a creative individual, but in their life, maybe they haven't had a lot of opportunity to foster their creativity, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so they, they're, they're kind of at a point like now or like when, when you meet them, when you get to know them, where they're starting to branch out a little bit and explore some of their creative ideas and options. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, 
Also, the Two of Wands can sometimes indicate travel. We have this globe here, this world imagery. So um, I feel for a number of you, your future partner is going to enjoy traveling or want to, to travel. And kind of along the same vein of what I was just talking about um, a minute ago, I feel like for a lot of you, this person really wants to travel, but maybe they've never really had an opportunity to do much traveling. So I just feel like this this person has a lot of like wanderlust and um, they just have all these dreams and these goals and they, they want to see so many, see and do so many things that they've never seen or done before. Um, so I feel like in your relationship, you might help them to achieve some of those goals or help them to broaden their horizons in those respects. Um, I feel for a number of you, this person may be a little bit older than you. Um, not by a lot, I don't think. I would say maybe five years approximately, like on average for the collective, five years older. Um, I'm also getting... I feel for a lot of you, your person is going to have like tattoos. I don't really see them being covered, but I see them having a few. And again, I feel like it's one of those things where like, they didn't really start until like a little bit later in life, like later than, like, okay. Most people who are interested in things like tattoos start relatively young, you know, 18, 20, but I feel like this person maybe doesn't get started until they're a bit older, like going on 30, possibly older than that. Um, and like, this is not going to be applicable for all of you, obviously, but um, it, it's kind of illustrating again, that idea that I've been touching on, like this person has goals, dreams, plans, things they want to do, but they just haven't had a lot of opportunities to do them. You know what I mean? I feel in their past, maybe they've struggled a lot with self-esteem, confidence. I mentioned, you know, creative ideas, creative projects, like for some of you, maybe your person wants to write a book someday but they maybe don't have a lot of practice with writing because they felt like they were bad at it in the past. And so they just didn't really do it or they just stopped doing it or they never really even started. I just, basically what I'm getting at here is I just feel like this person has really been held back a lot, particularly by their own uncertainties. And this is going back to that Nine of Swords, Five of Cups kind of energy. Um, this person has a tendency to be anxious. This person has a tendency to be a little bit pessimistic. I don't really feel that it's going to be as much of an issue like by the time you come together with them. But it's definitely something that is, you know, it, it's going to be, it, it's going to crop up now and then. And it's definitely something that I'm seeing being an issue in their past. So, like I said, I feel like they've come from kind of a low place, so to speak. Just low confidence, not a lot of faith in themselves. But I think your relationship is going to kind of give them a little bit of a boost, an energy boost. Um, not to say that you're going to like totally open their eyes to all of the, you know, beauty and wonder of the world. They don't really need you to do that for them. Um, but it, I, I see you helping them to kind of break out of their shell a little bit more and kind of pushing them to, you know, work towards some of the goals that they have and do some of the things that they've always kind of wanted to do, but maybe were afraid to do or never had a chance to do before. So, um, group number one, actually, I think I'm going to leave it here because we're almost 40 minutes into this video and, um, I wasn't quite expecting for this to be super long, um, but that's what I'm getting for, uh, 
the person you're going to marry, your future long-term partner. Um, also, before I quit, I want to say I'm getting... I'm getting a couple names here, like specific names. I'm getting Michael. <laughs> that one's coming through for me like the strongest or like something similar to Michael, Mitchell, something like that. M names, just M names in general. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> Megan. And I'm also getting the letter P and the letter O. Okay, so their names could, first or last names could start with some of those letters. And like I said, air energy, earth energy. So this person could have a lot of air in their chart or a lot of earth or a mix of both. <laughs> okay. Um, so I am going to leave it there, group one. I hope this was interesting and I hope that this resonated with you guys. Um, this is just general. So, you know, <clears throat> this is just the current strongest collective energy for all of you who chose this group. <clears throat> and now my voice is not wanting to act right. <laughs> so I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break before I start on um, the next group. But uh, yeah, group one, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I am wishing you guys all the best and I hope I see you next time. Bye. Okay, so those of you who chose group two, Let's find out who your future partner is. So I'm going to start with these Oracle cards. Um, the first one we have here is release. We have happy, happy. That's a good card. We have new moon in Scorpio, work through your fears. <clears throat> we have full moon in Pisces, balance spirituality and practicality. We have worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. Interesting. We have look for a sign. Okay. And a message for you. I'm thinking of you this very moment. Your love fills me with light. I love you. So let's take a look at your tarot cards. We have the Ten of Swords here. We have Four of Pentacles. Six of Wands, the Magician, Page of Pentacles, and the Emperor card. <clears throat> okay, so um, Group 1 also had the Magician as well as the Page of Pentacles, so that's kind of interesting. Um, give me a second, guys, to just look over these cards. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting right away that it, it seems to me like the majority of you who chose this option probably already know this person. I feel like you already know this person, you have some history with this person, you may be in separation from them right now because <laughs> this um, imagery here in this picture, um, we've got all this snow, it's this very cold wintry scene here going on. I kind of feel like <clears throat> This connection itself may be going through a winter of sorts, if you know what I mean. Um, okay, the Ten of Swords, this card relates to heartache, grief, betrayal. Um, it can represent painful, difficult endings. So this is kind of emphasizing to me that there has been, I, I feel like this is something that's already happened. Um, I feel like there has been some sort of ending within this, within your connection to this person. Um, we also have here a lot of, a, a lot of stuff that suggests um, that the situation is being divinely guided. Okay, we have this card, which clearly says divine timing is at work. We have this card, look for a sign. This implies to me that there is something, um, something significant about your connection to this person. There is something I feel that you should be, I feel like you should be um, kind of on the lookout for 
well, actually, okay, let me back up. I get the impression that you may be receiving signs and synchronicities pertaining to your connection to this person even now. Um, also, this card balanced spirituality and practicality, full moon in Pisces. You know, Pisces energy, it is very spiritual. It is very um, intuitive. And so uh, these cards are all suggesting to me that this is being divinely guided, your connection to your future partner, spouse is being divinely guided. And I feel, I feel quite strongly that you already have um, some history with this person. You've already met them. Um, and I get the sense that you, yeah, it seems like there's been some sort of release. Like there's been an ending, like I said already. I feel like a lot of you maybe have let go of this connection like you've surrendered it you know you've you've decided that i am you know i'm, I'm gonna try to move forward with my life you know i'm not gonna get caught up on this person i'm not gonna let myself stagnate because of this connection having not worked out the way that i wanted i'm gonna keep moving forward and you know trust that if this is something that's meant for me then it will come back to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like that's kind of the attitude that many of you maybe have adopted or you're in the process of adopting um, as far as this person is concerned. And <clears throat> if you don't know of anyone that you, that, that you have been in any kind of situation like that with, or where you are in a situation like that with them, then this may not be your pile because I feel... I feel really strongly that that's pretty much the gist of what's going on for you guys, group two. Um, this is someone you already know. This is someone you're in separation from. There's been an ending. There's been some kind of heartache. Um, <clears throat> and I feel like a lot of you, uh, to some extent, you, you, you still are kind of... I don't want to say holding on to this connection, but I feel like you are still feeling this connection. Um, because the Four of Pentacles, it's really about uh, persistence, endurance. Um, a lot of times this card does indicate like clinging on to something or trying to control something, but I don't really feel like you guys are doing that for the most part. I feel like you've, you know, as I said, I feel like most of you have kind of let it go. You know, you're, you're in that process of... <clears throat> just surrendering this whole situation and having faith that, you know, if you're supposed to be with this person, then you will be eventually. Um, I feel a lot of you actually have adopted a pretty positive attitude as far as this connection is concerned. I mean, this card's pretty self-explanatory and, you know, it, it talks to me about optimism and enthusiasm. And um, the Six of Wands, this is victory, success, recognition. Um, I feel for the most part, you guys are, uh, you've been pretty successful in, you know, moving forward and not allowing yourself, yourselves to stagnate because um, you are no longer in contact with this person. Um, and I do feel that there is something very significant about this connection. You know, obviously, with it is with it being divinely guided, um, there is a higher purpose here, and I feel for the most part the purpose is to kind of help you, but also them, to you know basically grow as people, work through your fears. This is new moon energy. New moon energy is all about new beginnings. Um, work through your fears. This really talks to me about overcoming our internal blocks and emotional triggers and, you know, healing ourselves and, and working through the, um, the, the pain, the old negative energies that we hold on to, sometimes without even realizing it. Um, I get the impression that this particular connection for many of you has been difficult emotionally because I feel that it's, it, it has, brought a lot of difficult feelings. It's it's triggered a lot of difficult emotions for many of you. And maybe kind of forced you to face parts of yourselves that you would normally prefer to ignore, you know? 
but I feel that you're going to come out of this on the other side as like almost an entirely new person. The magician card is manifestation, it's potential, it's opportunity. And with it being number one in the major arcana, following the full card, it does speak to us of, you know, new fresh energy. It talks to us about a new beginning, right? The creation of something new. And I feel that this particular relationship, it is, it's serving as like the forge upon which or in which you're going to be transformed into a stronger, wiser version of yourself. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, um, obviously, this is not so far. This is talking more about this particular connection itself. So, we will get into, like, this person's traits, characteristics, etc., and what your relationship will be like in the future. Um, however, if you already know this person, then I probably don't need to focus too much on what they're like and what they look like and all of that. However, I do want to say, I, I, I feel that when you and this person do come back together, um, they're going to be quite different from how they were in the past. So I, I will talk a little bit about that. Um, also, I feel that um, this person is thinking about you a lot. I mean, this card clearly s says to us, I'm thinking of you at this very moment. And I love you. And this person in the past has not really expressed their feelings towards you adequately. Um, I feel that, you know, this connection has caused you a lot of grief, both of you, a lot of grief. Um, and I feel that you have been frustrated fairly often with this person. But I feel that they are transforming as well. They are changing as well. And I kind of feel like they are in the process of becoming more like this type of energy, embodying this kind of energy. This is the emperor. This is, relates to like the divine masculine. So for a lot of you, I feel that this is possibly, you know, a soulmate or twin flame situation. Um, <clears throat> but the emperor is very mature, very stable, very responsible, in control of things, stern but fair, you know, balanced. I'm going to pull a few more cards here and see if we can't get more information on, like, the future, what's to come here, what you can expect, and, and a little bit more detail on in what ways this person is changing. You have the Five of Cups. The Five of Cups relates to pessimism. It can indicate fixation on the negatives, um, just grief, sadness in general. We have the Six of Pentacles. This is about balance. I was just talking about um, your person finding and, and creating a balance within themselves. <clears throat> the Six of Pentacles also speaks to me of, you know, generosity, reciprocation, mutual, you know, very mutual relationships. We also have the Empress showing up here, so this is kind of interesting because we've got these two counterparts, Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine. Um, the Empress also relates to wish fulfillment, manifestation, creativity. The Empress is a very loving, gentle kind of um, energy. I feel that this person in the past was very ego-driven. They, they were very much, you know, living in the 3D. They were not very spiritually aware, but they are in the process of changing that. And it's interesting because I feel like they're kind of... You know, we all have masculine and feminine aspects, energies, and ideally, you know, we it, it, we want to create a balance or find a balance between those two um, energies. It's like yin and yang, right? I feel like your person maybe in the past 
had a lot of one type of energy and very little of the other type. And so I, I feel like what this card, these two cards are saying and the six of pentacles and also this card balancing spirituality and practicality, I feel like this is indicating that they're in the process of creating a balance between these two aspects of themselves, you know, these two um, sources of energy inside of themselves. Does that make sense? It's like <clears throat> they are, it's like they're kind of breaking out of their shell in the sense that they're beginning to see the world from new perspectives. They are breaking away from like their ego. They are, <clears throat> I, I mean, it's, <laughs> It's, it's not that, um, it's not that ego is an, an entirely negative thing, but there has to be a balance. You know, there's balance. It's, it's a theme that I'm seeing here. Um, okay. So I feel like that's kind of what your person is in the process of doing right now. It's like they're in the process of healing themselves as well. You know, you're, you're kind of going through a transformation and so are they. There's the two of pentacles. This is another card that talks about balance. And and a, a lot of times the two of pentacles um, represents feeling kind of overwhelmed or like you're, you know, trying to juggle many things at one time. <clears throat> it can also be kind of an in and out, back and forth sort of energy. And I feel like that's the way that they have probably been in the past with you. Very in and out, very back and forth. I get the impression that it was kind of a struggle. You you kind of had to fight for their attention and their time. And I think it, from what I can see, it seems like it just got to a point where it was too much. And it was like, some of you just kind of threw your hands up and said, you know, this is not worth it. This is not worth the trouble, the pain, the grief. <clears throat> and so you just walked away from them. For others of you, I do get the impression that they maybe ghosted you. Two of Swords. And then we also have the Queen of Wands showing up here. This person... Um, seems to be making a decision about something after a long time of putting it off or procrastinating. Okay, what does that mean? Um, <clears throat> I feel... I feel that they have... How do I want to say this? It's like they're slowly realizing the purpose of this connection and there's they're beginning to, you know, learn to appreciate it. I feel that in the past they would not make a choice about this relationship. It was like they wouldn't make the decision to commit to it, but they also wouldn't make the choice to just walk away. It was like they just kept going back and forth, in and out, you know? I feel like that was probably a pattern um, within this relationship, them just going in and out, coming and going all the time. Because they, it was like they couldn't commit themselves to this connection, but they also couldn't stay away. And like I just mentioned a few minutes ago, I feel many of you made the decision for them. Like you made the choice to cut them off or detach from them. <clears throat> hmm. And I can hear some of you saying, I really don't want to be with this person in the future. I'm really over this relationship. And if that's what you're thinking, if that's something that you're thinking, um, and first of all, this is general. Second of all, you have free will. You don't need to do anything that you don't want to do. And third, 
this is, it's going to take time before this reconciliation happens, if you allow it to happen, okay? It's going to take time. This is not going to happen, like, next year, okay? This is fairly, fairly far off down the road. By the time this does happen, by the time you do cross paths again, this person is not going to be who they were before. And, and you're probably not going to be the person that you are now anymore because we're all changing. We're always changing or we should be. <laughs> um, so if you're one of those people who right now is saying to yourself, no, 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 I don't want to be with this person anymore. I don't want to have to deal with this person again. I would say try not to worry about it too much because you have literally no idea what is to come. The universe is going to surprise you in, in a very big way, I feel. Now, I can hear others of you saying, yes, 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 this is exactly what I wanted. I cannot wait to reunite with this person and to finally have the relationship that I've always wanted with this person. Well, I'm still going to say it's, it's, it's still going to be quite some time, I feel, before this reunion happens. Um, this seems like a relationship that is at least a couple of years down the road for the vast majority of you. Um, <clears throat> let me get a couple more cards here. Yeah, we have the Hanged Man. Three of Cups. I'm seeing, okay, and the Five of Wands, I'm seeing that in the future, this connection is going to finally achieve all of the potential that you've always known it had. You know what I'm saying? Three of Cups, this is very strong emotional bonds between people, deep connections, this is unity, togetherness. The Hanged Man relates to sacrifice as well as illumination, enlightenment, uh, new perspectives. And we also have the Five of Wands showing up here, which is interesting because a lot of times this is a very chaotic, um, conflicting kind of energy. It can represent competition or fighting. Um, in this particular case, uh, what I'm getting from these cards, first of all, this person is really going to surprise you. I think um, I'm getting here that they ultimately are going to sacrifice certain things for this relationship for you um things that are not necessarily serving them but that they how do i want to say this it's like this is kind of this is a little bit weird um it's like i'm i'm seeing this person letting go of things that they they know deep down are not really good for them but that they have held on to because you know, for, i mean for various reasons i feel for some of you your person perhaps is or has struggled with like an addiction or some kind of codependency for some of you, this could be like a particular relationship, like an, another relationship that this person um, has in their life that has been, that, that's had a negative impact on your connection. Um, not necessarily like someone else that they're romantically interested in, but just some kind of third party because Three of Cups can sometimes represent third party situations. Um, and a third party can be anything that is creating a wedge between you and someone else. It doesn't always have to be another person. Um, <clears throat> it can be a job. It can be family. It can be a friend. It can be physical distance. Um, but in this particular case, I, I see this as like your person making a sacrifice, making a, a kind of a big sacrifice for this connection so that it can thrive in the future, so that it can actually have a chance of surviving and growing. <clears throat> and I, whatever this sacrifice is, I see it as something that right now at this time in their lives, 
it's not even really something that they're considering. Like it's something that would, I feel like when it happens, it's going to kind of blow your mind in a way. And I hope this is making sense. You know, this is just general, so like take it how it applies. Um, I feel some of you are going to have an idea of what what I'm what this is talking about. Um, but some of you, it's like you would be shocked for this person if, if this person gave up whatever it is that has that has been blocking this connection. Um, but I'm seeing that eventually they will. They're going to make the decision to make that sacrifice. Okay, so um, I wanted to make note of that. Also, I mentioned I'm probably not, you know, I, I don't re really like to focus a whole lot on physical traits and characteristics that much anyway, because appearance is so changeable, you know. Um, but I will say, let me just, let me just touch on this a little bit. <clears throat> We have the Fool and the Ten of Cups here. This person seems to have kind of a youthful energy. Um, maybe youthful is not quite the right word. A, a little bit immature, maybe childish is a better way of putting it. Um, both of these cards kind of relate to children, youthfulness, um, sometimes immaturity, especially the Fool. Um, the Ten of Cups is a more family-oriented kind of energy, but um, and it's interesting because I feel like this person does care about their family a lot. They are kind of a family-oriented individual, like deep down, but it's like they don't have the level of maturity or, I want to say, self-awareness to really, like, make that obvious to other people, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like this person would like to have a family of their own someday. And in some ways, this person, like, it's something that this person wants to have. And I think for some of you, they are a little bit afraid that if it doesn't happen soon, that it's never going to happen for them. They're going to be alone forever. Um, and that's kind of illustrating the issue here. It's like, this person... <sighs> kind of has fundamentally the wrong idea about family um, or, or why they should have a family. It's like they want a family so that they will not be alone. And that's really not a good reason to start a family. <laughs> um, they love the idea of like being a parent, you know, teaching kids stuff and, and just having a happy family environment, dynamic, relationships, but it's like they don't actually have the ability to do that stuff. It's like they don't have the maturity, the level of maturity, or, um, oh my gosh, what's the word I want here? It's like they just haven't grown up enough emotionally and mentally. Because, like, deep down, it feels like they are very underdeveloped emotionally, especially. And it's like this person truly has a lot of growing to do before they're actually going to be ready to do anything like this. You know, raise a family or, you know, have a marriage, a partnership, you know, a functional relationship where you're working as a team. It's like right now this person wants all of those things, but they're not ready yet to do that stuff. And I feel for, for a lot of you, this person is probably around the same age as you or maybe a little bit older. Um, and I feel like they've not, they, I feel like you know that they are not super self-aware or like, and like, you know that they don't 
take responsibility for a lot of the things that they do and the choices that they make. And for some of you, that could be a big factor in why you decided to wash your hands of this person for the time being. Um, but I am getting that that is one of the things that is going to change about them. That's not something that spirit is going to allow them to just continue doing or being like long term. Um, they are going to receive a very rude awakening, like a wake up call. And it's going to kind of force them to grow up the way that they need to. And it's like, with your connection, with the situation that happened with you, it's like they've, they've started down that path of receiving that wake-up call, but they haven't, they haven't reached the peak yet. Like, they haven't yet had the big, um, like, life-changing experience just yet, but they're heading in that direction relatively quickly, I feel. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, relatively quickly. Uh, I feel, like I said already, it's probably going to be a couple of years at least before you guys are really in alignment with each other enough that, you know, you can come back together. But, um, yeah, group two, I, I think I'm going to wrap this up here because, um, I mean, I've, I've been talking for almost half an hour <laughs> for you guys. And, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I don't want to go too much into, um, like, who this person is because I, like, it seems to me like you already know who they are. So um, just know that in the future, everything is going to be different. This person is not going to be who they were when you knew them. They're going to be better. They're going to be more mature. They're going to be more responsible. They're going to be more self-aware. And I think that's a really big deal. Um, and if you choose to, you know, give this relationship another chance, I feel that there is a lot of potential for the two of you to be quite happy together. But that's something that's going to take time. Okay. So, um, yeah, group two, thank you for joining me today. I hope this was interesting. I hope that it resonated with you. And um, I hope I see you next time, guys. Do keep in mind this is just general, so take what applies to you. Leave the rest behind. If something doesn't fit, don't try to make it fit. Um, yeah, I hope I see you next time, guys. And uh, I'm wishing y'all all the best. Bye. Okay, so... Group number three, those of you who chose this option, let's find out who your future partner is. Who are you going to marry? So, let's start off with your oracle cards. The first one we have here is nature. We also have orphaned. We have be assertive. Finances and career. We have time. You are trying too hard. Give it time. Okay. Void of course moon. Nothing will come of this situation. Interesting. And new moon in Taurus. Prosperity lies ahead. Definitely a lot of like Taurian, just earth energy in general from this person, like right off the bat. Um, your tarot cards. We have ten of cups. We have Nine of Swords, we have Six of Wands, the Magician, Three of Swords, and Three of Cups. So, okay, this is interesting. First of all, Group 3, I don't really get the sense that you have met this person just yet. Um... This seems like something that's going to be new to you when the time comes, okay? And I do feel with this card being here that um, there may be a bit of a wait before you do actually cross paths with this person. Time, you know, obviously this is uh, <laughs> suggesting um, patience. So I do feel that it could be a year or more before you actually meet this person. Um, 
and and I do get that this person is very like career money focused, not not like greedy, not um not like money hungry or anything like that, but this person just takes their stability and their um you know, success very seriously. Like, like this is someone who really strives for success. They strive um, to to be, you know, financially secure, and um, that's really being illustrated here by this card, as well as this one, New Moon and Taurus. So, um, definitely a lot of earthy energy here. I also get the impression that this person has probably not had um, the easiest life. I feel with the Nine of Swords being here and the Three of Swords, as well as the Orphaned card. The Orphaned card, this is loss, loneliness, abandonment. The Nine of Swords is anxiety and stress, overthinking things. Three of Swords is heartache and grief and, you know, betrayal, loss. So um, we have some heavy energies here. And so, you know, that gives me the impression that this person maybe has not had the easiest life. I feel like they have struggled a lot emotionally. Um, they've been through some things. I do feel that this person has experienced a lot of loss. And so... <laughs> They may not be super focused. Th that could be why they're not super focused on relationships. They're more focused on the material aspects of their lives because, you know, money, a, a successful career, those are things that are not going to leave you quite as easily as, you know, a, a person might. So I do feel that this person is probably quite guarded emotionally, and it could take some time to kind of break those walls down. You know what I'm saying? Um, be assertive. This is telling me a couple of things. First of all, it's really emphasizing to me that, you know, this is a very ambitious, driven individual. It's also saying when you meet them, when you are getting to know them, you're probably going to have to be kind of assertive. <laughs> you're probably going to have to... Um, how do I want to say this? Um, I, I feel like you may need to really like push this person um, in terms of... See, I, I don't feel like you're going to have to fight just to maintain a relationship with this individual. But I feel like persistence. Persistence is, is probably going to be necessary here. Okay? Um... It's not that, it, you know, it's it's not that it's going to be like pulling teeth trying to get this person to open up to you um, or trying to move this relationship along. Um, it's, it's just going to take some persistence and patience as well with this individual because I feel like they're going to want to open up to you. Like they're going to want to get closer to you, but they're also going to be apprehensive about it because of past experiences that they've had. Um... This is someone who, and and for that reason, I think that's why this card is showing up here, because at, especially in the early stages, there might be moments where you wonder, is this really going to work? Is this person ever actually going to just let go and, and embrace this? And so you may have a few times where you might, you know, question um, this person's sincerity and, and their actual level of interest in developing a relationship with you. But I think every time they're going to prove to you that they do want this, it's just hard for them. Does that make sense? And that's just kind of their nature as a result of their, their past experiences, how they were raised, you know, that kind of stuff. I feel like they're just very reserved, very cautious. However, um, if you are persistent with this person and you are patient with them as well, then, you know, I do see a very, very positive outcome here. The Three of Cups, this is very strong emotional bonds between people. This is unity, togetherness, um, wholeness as well, like celebrations, good times. We also have the Six of Wands. This is 
victory and success and recognition. This is forward movement. The magician. The magician actually has shown up for every reading today so far. So that's interesting. But um, anyway, the magician is all about manifestation. It is number one in the major arcana. So, you know, it, it does kind of have this energy of a new beginning, a fresh start, new fresh energy coming into a situation. Um, this card also speaks of opportunity, creativity, the creation of something new. Okay. So this relationship is going to have a lot of potential to be very um, emotionally satisfying and very loving. And I feel that, you know, once this person does open up to you, you're going to find that you have a lot of things in common, a lot of mutual interests. Um, the Ten of Cups, this is a very, very loving, gentle kind of energy. It's a very familial kind of energy. This card, I think, has shown up for every reading as well so far today. Um, this card can represent family, children, that kind of thing. So if that's something that you're interested in, you know, having a family of some kind, then, you know, this, this is a pretty good indicator that... Um, you and this person will have that. You will you will have the opportunity to create that. Um, but in general, the Ten of Cups also talks about wish fulfillment and, you know, ideals. And so I feel that whatever you consider to be, like, ideal in terms of a partner, a romantic partner, I feel like this person is going to have most, if not all, of those qualities that you value. Um, I do also, I get kind of a, hmm, it's kind of a, like a, I want to say, I get kind of a cerebral vibe from this person. Like, this is a very intellectual individual. Um, like I said, very work-focused and, and all of that. The moon, yeah, this is the subconscious, this is illusions, this can represent, you know, things being hidden, secrets, that kind of thing. Um, this is basically emphasizing that this person is going to be difficult to read. They, uh, This is someone who doesn't really let their emotions show a whole lot. This is someone who kind of conceals how they're really feeling about things. Um, so they may come off as kind of cold, distant, you know, some of that like swords energy. And we do have the four of swords showing up right here. This card is generally uh, related to reflection, rest, withdraw. Um, this person is definitely a thinker. This person is kind of analytical. Um, not, not a super emotional, not a super emotional person. Like I said, the six of cups, this is associated with memories, nostalgia, the past. It can indicate something returning to you from your past. It is possible that you've known this person in a past lifetime. It's also possible that you, a small number of you maybe have met this person before, like in the distant past. This would not be someone that you have any kind of relationship with now. It would be, it, it would be someone, if, if you have met them in this lifetime, it would be someone that you may just briefly cross paths with. Okay, like a friend of a friend from school or, you know, something like that. It would, it would have been kind of a, uh, not a real close connection. Okay. Um, let me get a couple more cards here. We have the Hermit and the Ten of Wands. So the Hermit's kind of similar to the Four of Swords. This card also is about withdrawal. It's a very solitary kind of energy, isolation. Um, the Hermit is also definitely a thinker. This is really, really emphasizing the, the fact that your future partner is very intellectual and, and very... Um, analytical, like this person is always evaluating what's going on around them. They're always thinking about things. They may come across sometimes as a little bit spacey, like a little bit distracted because their their mind is always turning. They're always thinking about something. They're always analyzing something. Um, the Hermit is also Virgo, so more, more of that earth energy. I get a ton of earth energy from this person, so they could definitely be Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus. 
Um, Ten of Wands, this card a lot of times is about letting go of some kind of burden or letting go of something that's weighing you down. Um, I feel like a big, uh, something, something that may play a big role in your relationship, at least at certain points, is going to be this person's past, like their history. Like, this person has a lot of things that they need to heal from. And, you know, they are intelligent enough. They do have the self-awareness to do that healing. Um, it's just something that's going to take time for them. It's just something that, you know, it's a process that really can't be rushed. So, you know, their journey of healing from their past, particularly healing from their childhood, I feel... It is going to play a role in your relationship. And, you know, it's there are going to be some ups and downs because of it. However, I feel for the most part, your relationship to this person is going to be very stable, very solid. Like, I'm not seeing a lot of ups and downs. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm seeing a lot of understanding, like mutual understanding between the two of you. And for that reason, things are going to remain pretty consistent. Even when this person is going through some difficult stuff emotionally, or even when you were going through something, you know, whatever is going on, whatever's happening around the two of you or within the two of you, this relationship is going to be like a rock, I feel. Um kind of shifting gears a little bit, I feel like this person, as far as like their interests are concerned, how they like to spend their time aside from working and, you know, making money, I feel like this person does enjoy spending time outdoors, particularly, you know, in kind of isolated, you know, very peaceful areas because they like to get away. You know, I feel like this person likes to kind of get away from other people sometimes and just be by themselves. I do feel that this person is pretty much uh, definitely an introvert, okay? Um, like to be outdoors. They like to spend time by themselves. They like, this is someone who I feel likes to read, like, a lot. <laughs> and, um, like, not just fiction, but also nonfiction, like, uh, books about history and books about like science and even true crime and you know stuff like that this is someone who loves to learn new things and that's part of why they're always reading stuff um i'm also getting i get a very like professional vibe from this person so i feel like in terms of their career for most of you this person is going to be I feel working in, like, law in some capacity, like the court system, the legal system, um, I feel that very strongly. <laughs> also, some other possibilities would be, like, finance, something pertaining to business, okay? Um, those are, like, the types of careers that are coming through to me predominantly. Um, it's just, you know, I, I just feel like this person, this person invests a lot of their time and energy into their career in advancing their career. So whatever they do, it's something where they, you know, that they can and advance in. And it's something that does, you know, allow them a lot of financial security. <laughs> and I feel like regardless of what kind of job this person has, they are probably in a position of authority to some degree, okay? Like supervisor, department head, something along those lines. And whatever they do, I feel like they uh, they dress pretty professionally. Like they wear a tie to work every day or like, you know, button down, that kind of thing. Um, they always look nice, very presentable, well put together. And even you just whenever they go out, you know, whenever they leave the house, they they just like to look nice. They look they they like to put themselves together a little bit. Um, 
I do feel that they may struggle with anxiety at times. They may even struggle with depression at at, at, at times. Um, and, and like, obviously that is going to have an effect on your relationship, but I don't see that being a huge obstacle in, in your relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's something that the two of you will be able to work through together. Because like I said, this relationship just feels so, so grounded and so stable. Like, it's going to take a lot more than that to break the two of you up once you come together. Um, like, this person is, you know, some people are afraid of commitment. Some people are very non-committal. This person is, like, the opposite of that. This person feels like they do not like just casual, they don't like casual relationships. They, they like f to know exactly what's going on. They like to know what to expect in situations, not, not super spontaneous or unpredictable. They like routine, definitely a lot of Virgo vibes there. Um, <clears throat> but I don't get the impression that this person is boring or no fun, you know, um, because I do feel that they definitely have the ability to be um, really like goofy, silly, fun to be around. It's just they have to be very comfortable with a person in order to, you know, loosen up like that around somebody. Yeah, Seven of Swords. Um, this is a lot of times like something that is kept secret. Um, in this particular deck, a lot of times I see this guy as, you know, he's, he's like coming out of the coffin to speak his truth, to reveal something to the outside world. So it's kind of like, you know, this person is very, very deep. This person is extremely deep and they have a lot of layers. Um, there's a lot of different facets to this person that are not obvious on the surface, but once you get to know them and start peeling back all of those layers, it becomes very clear that you know, this is, this is a very multifaceted person, um, a very interesting person. And um, as far as appearance is concerned, I don't like to focus too much on physical appearance because it is so changeable. But um, what I'm seeing, I, I see someone who's a little bit like kind of on the thin side, slender. Um, and also like light, kind of pale almost. Regardless of their race, this would be someone whose skin tone is on the lighter end of the spectrum. Do you know what I mean? Um, which is kind of interesting considering they like to spend time outdoors. But I, I feel like this isn't really the type of person who, you know, goes to the beach and stuff like that. This is the kind of person who likes to go on, you know, hiking trails by themselves. <laughs> you know, they go, they, they go outdoors, they, they see the outdoors as like an escape from other people. Um, so they don't really go places where there's going to be a lot of other people, you know, wandering around or in their space. You know what I'm saying? This person may come across at times as kind of a hard ass, especially, you know, if you don't know them real well yet. Um, but I think deep down, they're actually quite soft and gentle and vulnerable. And that's why they're so guarded, you know, because they've been hurt badly in their past, I feel. And they know that they're vulnerable to being hurt again, because like, despite some of the things that have happened in their life, despite some of the experiences that they've had, they truly, it, it hasn't made them into a mean person or a bitter person. They're still soft. They're still sensitive deep down. They just kind of hide that. At least until they learn that they can trust you. Okay, group three. Um,
I think I'm actually going to leave this here. That's pretty much all that I'm getting for you right now. Um, I hope this was interesting, guys, and I hope it resonated with you. Um, you know, this is just general, so don't take it, like, too, too seriously. Uh, but, um, yeah, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you guys are interested in uh, booking a personal reading from me, you can do that. You can go to either my website or my Etsy store and make a purchase through either of those places. The links will be in the description and probably also in the pinned comment as well. So you can check all that stuff out if you're interested. And um, yeah, thank you again for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope I see you next time, guys. Bye. Okay, and lastly is group number four. So if you chose this option, let's find out who your future spouse is. So we'll start with your Oracle cards union right away. Very, very promising. We have keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. We have in the near future. Okay. Imagine. Luck is on your side. New moon in Sagittarius. Bring love into the situation. New moon in Aquarius. And reflection. Give each other some space at the moment. Trust and have faith that all will work out for the best. And your tarot cards. Four of scepters. Right away. This is four of wands in more traditional decks. So more very promising energy. Lord of skulls. The fool. Queen of knives. Strength. And five of skulls. So, all right, let me look at these cards here. Um, the first thing that comes to mind for me is that I feel like some of you may already know this person and some of you may even already be in a relationship with this person. Because like we have this energy of union with this card, obviously, and also with this card, the Four of Scepters, this card can represent marriage. It can represent, I mean, just unions, partnerships. Um, a lot of times it signifies to me like two people who are in alignment with each other, who are in a, you know, balanced, very functional relationship and a loving relationship as well. We have um, reflection, which is kind of a similar energy in the sense that um, this card, it, it again, it talks to me about a, a balance, a, an alignment of energy, and it, it kind of implies to me that you and the person that you're going to, to marry or be with, you know, long term, this is, this is a relationship that has definitely had its trials or will have its trials. Um, And I feel that the two of you are going to help each other to grow a lot. I feel that you and this person do have some sort of soul level um, connection. This is probably a soulmate of yours. Um, the strength card here, you know, this is considered to be one of the soulmate cards. This also relates to overcoming obstacles, overcoming adversity, inner strength, self, self-reliance, you know, endurance. Um, this is a relationship that will take work. It will take effort, but you know, every relationship takes those things. Um, strength though, this is really emphasizing to me that all of the hard work and all of the effort is ultimately it's going to be so worth it because both of you, it's like this relationship is going to help both of you to become better versions of yourselves. And it doesn't seem like the kind of connection where you have to do this work like on your own individually. This seems like the kind of relationship where you're learning from each other together as you go. Like this is not something that really requires a separation, you know? 
Um, the Queen of Knives here, this is the Queen of Swords. This card talks to me about insight, truth, understanding. The Queen of Knives is a very logical, practical figure. Um, this relationship is going to teach you so much about yourselves. And in the process, you're going to learn so much about one another. And I feel as this relationship goes on, like as time goes on, it's going to deepen and deepen and deepen until eventually it's like the two of you become, it's almost like the two of you become one over time, which is interesting. Um, I feel if you have not met this person yet, then it is very possible that they are not going to be quite the type that you usually go for. Um, or maybe uh, <laughs> some of you may have like a specific person in mind that you're hoping for this type of outcome with. But, you know, this is implying that whatever your expectations are as far as a partner is concerned, it's not going to... Um, <laughs> your expectations are not quite going to be met. However, I think they're going to be exceeded, okay? If you have already met this person, then this may have been the case for you when you did meet. Like, this person may have been someone that you wouldn't have normally gone for, like, not the type of person that you've dated in the past. You know, they might... Um, you know, usually you might go for like a certain kind of look and this person might differ from that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just in, in some way, this person did or will differ from what you are expecting or what you typically would pursue. However, like I said, I feel it's it's going to exceed your expectations. It might be exceeding your expectations already. Um, in the near future, this is a very present energy. And so this is part of the reason why I feel like some of you are already with this person or you've already met this person. If you haven't, I feel that you're going to meet them pretty soon. I would say by the end of this year, probably. Um... <clears throat> Let's see. Luck is on your side, new moon in Sagittarius. I feel, I mean, I get a lot of Sagittarius energy um, from this person, so definitely could be Sagittarius. We're also getting Aquarius vibes here as well. So could be one of those two signs, or they could have um, these signs, you know, somewhere predominantly in their chart. Um, luck is on your side. You know, this is... Um, opportunity. And this is uh, good fortune coming your way. Bring love into the situation. This is about being truthful to who you are and, you know, being true to yourself and, and, and not hiding who you are from other people just so that they will accept you. Do you know what I'm saying? So I kind of feel like your relationship to this person, they, okay, they might um, at least initially, be a little bit afraid to show you who they truly are. And I think that's probably going to be because they've been burned in the past. They have... For, for some of you, your person has been taught that they are not enough the way that they are. That... In order to be liked, they have to pretend to be someone else. And it's not because they're, you know, truly a bad person or anything like that. It's because they just, they've never been appreciated for who they are and what they are. No one has ever... <sighs> it's like they just, they haven't had the right people around them. somewhat similar to the previous group, group three. I feel like for a lot of you, your person has had a different, uh, difficult upbringing um, and some difficult experiences in their lives, just in general. So, um, yeah, I, I feel like they've, they've just been severely underappreciated in their life. And they, they've never really, 
like like when they have truly opened up to someone and they have you know um a allowed someone to get close to them and and they've been their authentic selves they've been ridiculed they've been um hurt it just didn't go well because they just they haven't they haven't had the right people around them you know some people sometimes we encounter people in our lives and there's just it, it's like it's like the opposite of a magnetic effect it's like it, it's like the connection is totally polarizing and you can just feel like I don't think I vibe with this person just on a base level. You know, have you ever experienced that? <laughs> um, and, and it's like, for the majority of this person's life, they've had a lot of that. Like, a lot of the people that this person has known, they just haven't, they just haven't had a real connection with. Even, even a lot of their family members, I feel. It just, they just never... It's like they just weren't, they, they may have been part of the same family, but they weren't part of the same tribe. You know what I'm saying? They, they weren't connected at the soul level in any way. But I feel that you and this person are. Like you are this person's soul family. Okay. And so they can be themselves with you. They can show you who they really are and you'll appreciate it. You'll be able to appreciate who they truly are as a person and you'll be able to understand who they truly are as a person. Um, there was something that I wanted to say pertaining to that. Oh, early on in your relationship, they may, uh, they may not be totally forthcoming about certain things about themselves because they have been led to believe that they are insufficient, inadequate. So it may take them time to really show you, to like completely open up. You know what I'm saying? Um, there could be occasions, a few occasions where they might even, you know, they might even like stretch the truth a little bit or not be completely honest with you about something about themselves because they just they're they're afraid that you might think poorly of them but it's like it's weird because i don't feel like they would truly have anything to that that they should truly be ashamed of or like like i don't see this person having any secrets that that are actually like bad <laughs> or um, aspects of themselves that really warrant hiding or fudging. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like they just, they just feel so not confident about who they are because they've just been taught, they've been led to believe that they're not enough the way they are. But I think that your connection is going to teach them that they are enough. And so they're, they'll grow out of that, you know? Um, I do see this being a very stable union, Lord of Skulls. This is pentacles. Um, this is earth energy. This is very solid, grounded, stable, committed, okay? The Fool is also here. This is all about new beginnings, embarking on a new adventure, um, opportunity, enthusiasm. This is kind of emphasizing that there is going to be something kind of transformative about this relationship because you guys are going to be changing and growing together like every step of the way but also it is going to be a journey it's going to be a journey that you're going to take together you're going to build a life together you and this person i 
feel you'll you'll probably I feel pretty confident for most of you that you're you're probably going to end up having a at least a child with this person if that's something that interests you. And um kind of going along with what I was just talking about, imagine this is manifestation, this is making dreams into reality. It's like anything you can imagine, you can make real. So this is talking to me more about like you and this person building your life together, manifesting your goals together, finding ways to work together to, 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 you know, make real what you guys want. I'm seeing you guys like driving around and, and seeing a nice house and being like, you know, I, I'd like for us to live in a house like that sometime, someday. And the two of you will actually, you know, eventually make that happen, work together to make that happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just see this being definitely like a team, uh, like, like the two of you being a team and, and working together well as a team. And I haven't even pulled any other cards yet. Let me um let me let me pull a few more cards and see if there's anything else that um wants to come through about this person. We have the Queen of Skulls here as well. So we have the Lord of Skulls and the Queen of Skulls. These two cards are counterparts. Um, when counterparts show up, particularly in relationship readings, they talk to me of a union. Um, two people who are a couple or who are going to be a couple. And with this being Earth energy, it's 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 solid. It's really solid. Like this is a very long term very lasting marriage or union. We have the Lord of Knives. So another pair of counterparts showing up here. This is kind of emphasizing a little bit more of the, um, the fact that, you know, over the course of your journey together, you're going to learn a lot about one another, but also a lot about yourselves. Um, Nine of Knives. This is anxiety. This card pertains to like stress, worry, overthinking things. We have the world. Oh, that's a lot of cards. Hang on. Okay, we have Justice and Seven of Knives. Yeah, the Seven of Knives is kind of emphasizing what I was saying a few minutes ago about this person may not be totally forthcoming with you about certain things initially, um, but they will, I feel, come to understand that, like, you're not going to be judgmental of them the way that they have experienced judgment in the past. Um, and so they'll, I think they'll grow out of that or they'll move past that relatively quickly. Um, justice, this is balance, this is fairness, equality. Um, I see this being someone who is going to take you, your needs, your wants very seriously. This is someone who I feel is probably going to want to spoil you as much as they can. Um, the Nine of Knives, this is interesting because I don't really feel like this is their energy exactly. I feel like this may be more like your energy, like are, do you have a tendency to be anxious about things um, or worried about things or just really stuck in your head about things? Because if so, I feel that this person could help you a lot with that. Um, this person could be just a very calming, very soothing presence for you. Um, and for some of you, this person may actually... Um, particularly... I'm, I'm getting particularly if you, the viewer, have had or have even now, any kind of, like, mental health things, um, I feel like this person's going to make the effort to understand that stuff and how, how it affects you. You know what I'm saying? Because this person really wants to understand you. Ten of Knives. Hmm. Let me get a clarifier for that. 
Ten of Knives, Eight of Knives. Okay, this is kind of talking more about like their history and Lord of Scepters. I've, I've mentioned already this person has been hurt a lot in their past and it's caused them to be very, to, to not think real highly of themselves. Um, the Eight of Knives, this is like self-limiting thoughts or beliefs. This is um, isolation, feeling stuck, confined. And the Lord of Scepters, this is the King of Wands. I'm actually getting from this card, in this particular context, that this person may be, for some of you, this person may be, um, as a result of some of the things they've experienced, they've come to, like, use their sexuality as, like, a coping mechanism, which is interesting. Um... So, like, when you meet them, when you're first getting to know them, if they seem to be very, like, focused on, like, sex or, you know, the physical aspects of relationships, try not to let that put you off too much. I mean, I don't feel that this person would be, like, disrespectful or um, totally vulgar or anything like that. But uh, if they just seem very interested in that if it becomes you know a topic of conversation um i wouldn't i wouldn't interpret it as that's all they're interested in i would interpret it as that's the way that they know how to relate to potential partners best because i feel like I feel like they've probably never really had a relationship before where they actually connected with their partner on an, a real emotional level. So I feel like physical intimacy is the primary type of intimacy that they've experienced. They've never really had emotional intimacy with anybody before. So that's not really something they're familiar with, but they they would they would become familiar with it as you um as you get to know each other so um i am getting a little bit of information on this person's appearance i don't oh sorry i don't like to focus too much on physical appearance because it is so changeable but um i am getting i'm getting that this person is probably average height for their gender um, I would say kind of, I don't really see this being a real thin person. I see this being kind of like, like someone who is maybe a little bit on the thicker side, like curvier side, um, of things. And I'm getting like, light colored hair or like a sandy brown kind of color and i'm also feeling like a lighter skin tone regardless of race their skin tone would be kind of you know towards the lighter end of the spectrum if that makes sense Also getting blue eyes specifically. Four of Grails. This okay, this is um in Daughter of Scepters. Okay. I feel like this person likes a lot of nerdy things like video games, movies, Star Wars, uh, um, stuff like that. This might be the type of person who um, oh, where was I going with that? Sorry, hang on. Um, I, I feel like this would be the type of person who would see, you know, playing games together or you know just just watching movies together, hanging out, watching TV together as a real bonding um, activity. <laughs> And um, 
I feel that you would have a lot of mutual interests, like music taste, things like that. I feel, I feel like this person might come across as kind of lazy sometimes, but I think for the most part, it's like this, this, this person, like they need to have their brain like stimulated. Like if they're bored, if, if, if something is boring to them, they're not going to want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so when it comes to like household stuff, it may take some pushing to get them to like really uh, uh, help out a whole lot. Um, although it's not to say that you would have to like clean up after them or anything like that. I mean, this is someone who, okay, how do I want to say this? This person can definitely motivate themselves. They are not truly lazy in the sense that they don't want to do anything productive, but, um, I feel like maybe they just procrastinate. They might have a tendency to procrastinate a lot. I, I think, yeah, okay, that's 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 what it is. They they have to kind of psych themselves up to do things that are, you know, more boring to them, um, like washing dishes or yard work, things like that. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, overall, guys, I feel. Like, this is a really, really beautiful relationship um, that is in store for you. If you haven't met this person, if you're not with this person already, because, I, like I said, I feel like some of you are already with this person. And um, the two of you, you're going to work together and you're going to make, you're going to make, you're going to make things happen. You're going to have a good life. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, group four, I'm going to leave it at that. I hope this was interesting. I hope that this resonated with you. And um, if you're interested in a private reading with me, uh, you can go to my website or my Etsy store. All the little links will be in uh, the description. So um, check that stuff out if you're interested. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I am wishing you guys all the best, and I hope I see you next time. <laughs>